I slap Chloe's butt every time she passes <laughs> passes me in, in our apartment because <laughs> I can. I can touch your butt. Like, I can grab your boobs. Like, it's just like all these moments of like, <laughs> yeah. wait, this is okay. I can smack your booty. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a very fun guest on the channel. Today, I'm with my husband, Psyche. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and today, we are going to be doing a little Q&A a little relationship advice video where we talk about all things dating, engagement, married, marriage. <laughs> we just answer all of your guys' questions about Christian relationships and what it's like to have a godly Christ-centered relationship. And so I have a bunch of you guys' questions here, like literally like a bunch of questions. And so we're going to go through and we're going to answer these questions. Are you excited? I am excited. Cool. Two disclaimers before we get into this. The first one is Psyche has not heard any of these questions yet and we haven't like talked about them or anything. I just wrote down some of the most asked questions and I just want this to be a very like raw answers video where I, we can just tell you guys our honest, first thing that comes to our mind answers and just, yeah, so we can just have a real conversation with you guys. And two, we're not marriage counselors. So we're not like professional pastors or professional counselors counselors or, or mentors or anything yeah. we want to be an example to you of a really great godly relationship we want to be able to give you advice to mentor you but we're not professional counselors or no. therapists or anything no. so but. just a little disclaimer yeah. <laughs> but we do we do have a christ in a relationship and we want to give you guys the best advice that we can give you yeah yeah also i have some coffee here in my new Kristen. John's Kristen made mug and it's adorable. My friend Maddie got it for me. It's cool. Isn't it cute? It's it's, it's cute. Yeah. I'm not a huge coffee drinker, so. Mm, this is from this morning. Ah. <laughs> okay. Without further ado, let's get into the questions. Okay. The first question, which is something that I've already addressed, do you guys do marriage counseling or mentoring? I don't know if that means do we go to counseling, or if we are mm, counselors. No, we're not counselors, but also no, both, we both don't go to counseling. Are no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we haven't had the need to see a counselor or anything, and we've kind of had God as our great counselor, yeah. <laughs> basically. And yeah, we have a great. Yeah, I'm th I'm thankful for the relationship that we have. That we work really well together. Yeah. Super tight. We're like best friends. Yeah, best friends. You know, we don't argue ever. Mm -hmm. We've never had a like an a argument. fight <laughs> no we have not and so i'm thankful for that i'm very yes. thankful for that and um but also no we don't like have professional degrees or professional credentials yes but also do... we're not no so but, i mean if people ask us for advice sure we're we'll happy to give, give our advice yeah we're happy to give advice but we're not like author we don't get paid or... to counsel people. no that is not yeah. what that's not our <laughs> calling so to say okay the next question is advice for singles in their early 20s Singles in their early 20s. I would say for me, my advice would be to really just focus on you and your relationship with God, obviously, but just focus on if you, if that is a dream of yours to be a wife, to be a husband someday, take that time of singleness to improve yourself, to work on yourself, to get ready to be a, a spouse to someone someday so that mm -hmm. you can d be that when the time comes, you know? Yeah. As an early 20 year old, don't rush into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like Chloe and I, we talked for five months nonstop. Before we even before dated. Before we even started dating. So by the time we started dating, we had a really good foundation. Friendship, we had a great friendship. Yes, great mm -hmm. friendship and good foundation based on communication. Yeah. Which you always hear me say is so key in relationships. Um, mm -hmm. That That's it true. made the rest of the relationship really easy. And it still does, we communicate you know, yeah. we are not af we're not afraid to share opinions, uh, thoughts. thoughts, whatever. Don't rush into it. Be friends first. Yeah, and and also just know? don't be so focused about getting into a relationship. Like, yeah. God's timing is so perfect. Like, mm -hmm. if you're not gonna get married right now, that's okay. You don't have control yeah. of that, anyways. It's God's timing and it's God's perfect and, timing. And, and if you know our story of how we met and how yeah. we started dating, I mean, you you know. You can get the sense that God's timing was perfect in the fact that the time we just met yeah. was the perfect timing. And the time we started yeah. dating and got married was the perfect and time. And when you know. we met, it, we weren't looking for no, a spouse no, at all. No, we were not. Yeah. <laughs> but God's timing is perfect. So yeah. that's our advice. So, so definitely don't rush into it. Communicate. Be friends first. And, and, then, and take yeah. time to... Yes. Take time to 
become a spouse. Take time to become an individual before you can become one with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Next question says, would you date someone who wouldn't wait for marriage? I, I wouldn't date someone who's like trying to entice me to, you know, have sex with them before marriage. If they made the mistake to, of doing that and, you know. That's a good point. And, yeah. and then we're like, I've, you know, surrendered all that like to God. Like they made that decision in the past. They made that decision in the past and they know they messed up and they've surrendered all that to Jesus. And, you know, you know, Jesus is their whole world. Then I'm not going to. They hold... became born again. Yeah. They like the, or repented. They, they, they repented from that. Mm -hmm. I, can, that I cannot hold that against them as to a reason why I, I wouldn't date them. You know, I don't but think... But would I date someone that in our relationship, they did not want to wait for marriage? No. No. That's, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's so, the key. Don't I get feel that, like that's yeah. like more the question is like, would you, would you date somebody that isn't going to wait for marriage? Yeah, I would not because I don't want someone who's going to try and entice me down a path of sin that I know is wrong. Well, and you guys are you not know? on the same faith level. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, guys, you guys don't want the same things. You, they, they obviously don't believe in the same things as what the Bible cl states clearly of what's right and wrong. About sex. About and sex. And what it's and designed for. Yeah, and so I would say no. Yeah, no, I would yeah. say no too. But, of, of course, if you messed up in the past and you've done all those things, you've repented all those things. Right. There's obviously, there's, there's grace for, and forgiveness. Yes, and, yeah. Yeah, but, no, if, yeah. If Chloe was like, oh, I've had sex before yeah. and, you know, I'm not a virgin, I would, I'm would i not going to hold that over her. Yeah. You know, because I know if her. I was, if I was Right, again, yeah, and I while did, we were dating. And I knew you know, that what I did was wrong and I never wanted yes, to do it again. all yeah. that stuff, exactly. So, so yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next question says, how did your boundaries switch when you went from dating to engaged? They did it. I was gonna say I don't think yeah, we I don't, changed at all. <laughs> I don't think we did. I feel like maybe like for us, because first of all, we never had, we were never somewhere alone. So like we never were in a house by ourselves. We never were like were completely alone. Mm -hmm. The only um, thing was, I think when we got engaged, like our family probably gave us a little bit more space. Yeah, that was probably more. It but we were still never alone. Yeah, yeah. No, there was never a time where it wasn't like there was someone in the house still. Yeah. Or the, you know. Um, but yeah, as, as we, when we went from dating to officially engaged, that's when it yeah. was like, oh, they're an engaged couple. Like, let's give them you some know, space. Let's give them some space. Like we have to trust them. Yes. Like we got probably more trust, but our, our physical boundaries didn't change at all. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So this next question is kind of funny, but it's a good question. And that says how to explore in your sex life without it being awkward as a married couple, I'm assuming is what you're saying. Just gotta do um, it, bro. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I mean, he's not wrong. Uh, yeah. One, I mean, I'm going to say one thing. Go like, for it. when we first got married, I was in the exact same boat as you, where I was so scared that sex was just going to be so awkward. Like, I literally was like, everyone my whole life has told, like, made this expectation that it's so awkward on your wedding night. And I was, like, so scared it was going to be awkward. And it but wasn't. But it was not awkward it at was all. The best thing he's ever. my best friend in the entire world. And we just, like, it was just natural. And so, mm -hmm. for, like, exploring your sex life, I mean, it's the same thing. You guys just grow together and you, you do things together and you make those decisions together and you can explore and try different things together. And if it's not great, then you can laugh at it together. We, we laugh a lot. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I had nothing, nothing else to add to that. Yeah. Like, that I, you great. agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, don't be afraid of that. I think there's like this weird... Yeah. Looming thing that's like, oh, sex is so it's awkward. awkward. The first time, Abs you know, it's if it's not. your best friend and it's like, you know, you know, it's the person you just it's so been, natural. you've been longing to marry. It's oh my gosh, it was the most natural, one of the yeah. most natural things I've done, you know, and it's, yeah. we've done. So mm -hmm. and yeah. who knows, maybe like when you are in that exploring stage, like there yeah. is might be awkward, but like, we awkward can just laugh moments. at it together. Yeah, like, it's just I, funny to us. Yeah. Like, I just think it's funny. So, yeah. and it's so exciting getting to like explore, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Next one's actually a really, really good question, mm -hmm. um, and that is how to initiate things on your wedding night, not awkwardly. So like getting undressed, showering, etc. Hmm, that's a that's like a good question. Yeah. Because it's not like was it awkward? Because it was very that's that's a very specific. It was more what do you do? Yeah. What do you do to I not mean, make like, it awkward? I mean, like Chloe and I have talked about it before we got to yeah. our wedding night. So it's like, well, what do you want to do first, or what do you want to do? Yeah. You know, it's like. So again, it's, it, fun it, to it's talk about. stripping down the awkwardness and not letting it take over the circumstance and the situation, and, you know, in the and moment. And like that, what you just said, like we, we communicated and we were, we had the same exact expectations going into mm -hmm. the night where it was like, we basically had no expectations. Yeah. We just like, we talked about like 
do we want to shower? Like, cause I mean, obviously after your wedding night, you're probably you're all like sweaty gross and gross. And dirty. And yeah. So like, do we want to shower first? Do we want to do this first? Like for me, looking back on it, like I probably would have rather like maybe try to make it more special, but and ultimately it was perfect for us. Yeah. If you want, like there's some, there's like this, there are like some practical things I can tell you. So like, if you want to make it not awkward, you can do something special. I mean, you can like put on some nice perfume. You can like put on some nice, like a nice outfit. You can light some candles. Like you can make it special so it's not mm. awkward. But like for us, we just want it to be real. Like we want it to be just us. And we ended up like, I think we showered together, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. the first time that like we were able to be in that like vulnerable naked state together, mm -hmm. we just took a shower together and it was so fun. Yeah. It was just like, it was just yeah. fun. It was playful. It was, and then, it was yeah. marriage. It was the first little part of we marriage. We both, and... I think, did we cry? No. We were just, we were just happy. We were just so happy. We were like, happy. oh my gosh. The most giddy and just like joyful <laughs> moment yeah. when you're, you know, the person you've been longing to be the most, at the most vulnerable physical state possible. You're finally there. You're finally there. And it's just and like it's, all boundaries are stripped yeah, off. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's such a, it's such a great place to be, you know? And it feels um, amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so for yeah. us, it wasn't awkward, no. but in order to make it not awkward, I would just say the biggest thing would probably be to communicate like what you guys want. Communicate like, before. Have a game plan, you know? Yeah. Have and a little it, bit it, of a plan. And it's the mentality state too. Yeah. I mean, if you're mentally going in like, this is not going to be awkward. This is going to be a holy and joyous and, and yeah. a holy and joyous moment. It won't be awkward. Yeah. You know, and no a little what. inside, if you guys want a little inside to our life. I don't remember if we did the first, the first night, but we pray every single time. Yeah. Psyche so will pray over it every time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that you can do to make it more real and more like put, make you guys closer is to just pray before and just a little short prayer and just ask God to bless your time together and yeah, I would just recommend that. I yeah. think it's really, really great. Mm -hmm. Next question says, what was the transition like from waiting slash not being physical to having sex? And then in parentheses, she said, uh, mentally, physically, etc. So, well, I mean, obviously, the best thing was boundaries getting the room. Oh yeah. I mean, that's like everything just gets kicked out the door and yeah. it's so nice. Right. So that's like one of the biggest reliefs about marriage is like, there's no, yeah, there's no, I mean, I slap Chloe's butt every time she passes <laughs> passes me in, in our apartment because <laughs> I can. Can any guy that's married not smack his wife's butt every time he sees her? I mean... Pretty sure it's not possible. <laughs> the transition was... It was almost natural. It was like we knew we were getting to that point mm -hmm. and you know, neither of us had sex before our wedding night, so we kind of ha had to figure it out a little yeah. bit. Although, it's a learning curve. Oh no, yeah, although 20 and a 22 year old can kind of figure out <laughs> <laughs> kind of figure out the How pieces works. that go together um, <laughs> but but yeah no it uh it, it, like initiating all that and like transitioning from a non-sexual part physic physicality part of a relationship to a sexual part of physicality in a marriage frankly was a very simple trans transition it yeah. was not like super complicated yeah i would say like for me like for when, cause she said mentally in like parentheses, mm. and I would say for me mentally, like the transition, it was a little bit hard, like not hard, but it was weird because we've had so many moments where we're like, oh my gosh, like we can have sex. Like, oh my gosh, like I can touch your butt. Like I can grab your boobs. Like, it's just like all these <laughs> moments of like, yeah. wait, this is okay. Like, cause yeah. you're, you're taught your whole life. Like, don't do this. Don't do this. And then all of a sudden you're married yeah. and you can, and you're like, you're taught it's so wrong what? to do such things. Of course, outside the context of marriage, right? Yeah. But it's like, I feel like sometimes, and the church especially sometimes forgets to emphasize like... in Sex marriage, is good in marriage. In, in marriage, it's the best thing. Yeah. You know, it's so like, it, what's, it, what's, it's what keeps the connection in the... Well, and the, God you know, designed it so that it would be enjoyable yeah, and pleasurable. Exactly. And yeah, so, mm -hmm. but I would say that was the biggest transition thing for us is like, oh my gosh, wait, we can do this? We can actually do it. And being... I can smack your booty. And not... <laughs> And not feeling like guilt, feeling guilty about yeah. it, and not feeling shameful about it. Definitely for the first couple of days, we're like, we're like, I feel this like we is did something wrong. So wrong. Like, but we're like, wait, wait a minute, we're married. We got hey. <laughs> <laughs> got the pictures to prove it too. You know, it's and like, the documents. Yeah. So, you but know, yeah, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next one says, "How did you know he was the one that God chose for you?" Okay, I can answer that immediately. Yeah, you go. I would say for me, for both of us, it was v like we had a lot of confirmation from our friends, from our families, and we just knew, like we just knew that we were right for each other. And 
also we took like he said we had like five months where we talked and i prayed so much i was like god what should i do like should i have patience and wait this out and see if it goes anywhere should i just completely like forget about it like i trusted god so much and i he he kept saying patience and patience and patience and obviously it worked out and so i think like for me it was just a confirmation over time of just things falling into place and things i had peace about everything i just knew like in my heart i knew from praying that god like handpicked you for me because everything it's just like it's like we can't even go into everything but it's just crazy how like similar we were and just how everything just kind of went it literally you know is, yeah. it just it fit like a glove you literally. know so like a key a key in a turn a keyhole you know? <laughs> a key in a keyhole yeah i don't have much to add to that uh, that was basically basically yeah. what happened through talking through just getting to know each other through no red flags no red flags you know if we you, have a whole video about why we're getting married so young yeah if you wanted to see that we talked a lot about like how we knew like yeah we were supposed to be married. yeah so you can go watch that video too yeah uh but yeah I just, I bounce off a lot of liquid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next one says, did you have any expectations going into marriage? I think we did. I think it depends on what you're saying about expectations. But yeah. for us, like we had expectations in the sense of like, we just knew it was going to be fun. Like we just oh, knew yeah, we were going to yeah. be living with mm -hmm. our best friend. We had the expectation just like letting us figure it out. We knew there was going to be a learning curve. We knew we'd have to get used to living together and yeah. life together and a lot of new things. But I think that was the only real expectation that yeah, we had. Yeah, there wasn't any like specific, I expect you to do this. I expect yeah. you to do that. You know, I mean, expectations are the killer of joy. Mm -hmm. So we didn't go in with any expectations and we're still finding so much joy in each other, yeah. you know? I think um, it's because we're having to figure out together and we're learning together. We didn't put certain expectations on certain people. We're just, we're on the same playing field. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. The next one says, how do you communicate well after a fight? <laughs> we haven't exactly had a fight. Oh, we will have, we will have like intense conversations that you know built up frustration of certain not at each other not we've each never other, really been frustrated at each other but we've had been frustrated at certain circumstances and yeah, certain things situations. like that in such so, so, situations so it'll kind of build up in us and eventually sometimes it'll just ah, you just need to let it out and yeah i'm a person who like this is my problems <laughs> and, and, I it, and then it's just like I like word vomit yeah. and, have and so like, and so sometimes like, we'll you know we'll raise our voices in frustration but it's never at each other you know but, but the, the question was how do you communicate well after and I think for me like after things like that happen the best advice I could give you would be to love the person in their love language so like for us mm -hmm. both of our love languages are our physical touch and yeah. so anytime that we get like in those places in the, in the headspace and we're like, we're not mad at each other. We're just like, oh, we're just frustrated. Mm -hmm. Our biggest love language is touch. And so like, we'll just need to have that like moment because mm -hmm. that is how we're going to regroup. That's how we're going to get our heads out of the sky, yeah. like back on earth. Well, yeah, we'll usually like pray first after, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of calm our hearts and kind of bring everything yeah. before God and just be like, you know, the best person to the word vomit and you know, go to with your problems is God, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he's Complain always going to be ready and there for you. And he is a wonderful counselor and a, you know, a mighty God and a Prince of peace and a and father. Yeah. And so he is definitely the best person to go to with anything. Yeah. But then that first, and then in terms of taking care of each other, like Chloe said, acts of physical intimacy. Yeah. That's, you know, treat or uh, love each other with each other's love languages, yeah. you know? I would say that was my best, my biggest thing. Yeah. So, if, and if they like words, then just give them some words of affirmation. Yeah. If they have, if they like acts of service, after they're frustrated, go and do the, the dishes yeah, for them. Clean the like, dishes. do something clean that up, is yeah. going to make them like know that you're still there, you're listening, you love them, and that you're not going to like leave them. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen, brother. I call her bro a lot. I need to, so, dude. And dude, bro, and dude. It's bro, just, it's just the relationship. Bro, it's like, bro, can you believe it? It's also because I've dude. grown up with six, five other best friends, and I call them bro and dude all the time. But Chloe is a best friend, now so I'm there one you of the go. Guys. No, please no. You, she is not one of the guys. No. When we got married, I told all the guys that I am a bro-in-law. I mean, you you are technically I'm a bro. -in -law. Technically, she's a bro-in-law. So. so. <laughs> the next question says, did you pray about it before you went on your first date? And I kind of just talked about this, which is like, I prayed for, we both prayed for a long time before we even, before we even like thought about dating. Mm -hmm. We both had to process things with God. We both had to like 
talk to God and see like, is this right? Like, is this something that I should be pursuing? Mm -hmm. Or is this something that is fleshly that I just am caught up in? You know, I had to be patient with all things. So I definitely yeah. prayed before we went on our first date. And I had a really hard time struggling with whether or not to tell Chloe I liked her. And yeah. I was debating about waiting till December when I saw her again, be like, I really like you and see where that went. Or it's like, do I tell her in November? So I can go out so and then I can, So we can like start dating in December. Oh my gosh, it was the, you know, for those of you who were at school with me and my friends watching, you know that struggle I was dealing yeah. with, but. Also just know. for a little reference, y'all probably don't know anything about a love story. So if you guys do want to hear just our whole like love story and how it happened, Comment down below because we need an entire video about like we can. this the the steps the timeline each, and yeah, everything like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah, but I had a really hard time with that and I was just yeah. praying and praying and praying and praying. In the end, obviously it was the right choice. Yeah. But um yeah, no, that was that was that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> so Okay, and the last question says, When do you think it's appropriate to start dating? And actually a lot of people asked me that question. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think it's different for each person. Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on your maturity, maturity level, mm -hmm. mentally, spiritually. Yeah. I think those are huge factors into whether or not you're ready to date someone. Because some, for me, I felt like I was ready to start being in relationships at the beginning of high school. Because I mm -hmm. felt like I was mentally there. I felt like I was spiritually there for as good as I could be as a freshman in high school. <laughs> um, but there are people in their mid-20s who still are struggling with that you know, emotional maturity, spiritual maturity that can't hold a relationship for a long time just because they don't have that. And then yeah. they're not fully ready to have it. And I'm not shaming, no. I'm not shaming those people like that, but you know, there's a, there is a certain level of maturity that it takes to hold a relationship. A marriage is not an easy thing. I mean, marriage is awesome. It's been, the but e it's, yeah, yeah, it's, this has been easy, but like doing life together can sometimes be hard. Being it, responsible for yeah. a human being is yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, so it, it does take maturity. I would say it's not as much about age. I don't, it, it's, it's, we're not going to be able to tell you, oh, when you're 13 and a half, like it's not going to be easy yeah. for us to say that. But for us, like we've even talked about our kids, like what we're going to do. And honestly, it's going to have to be a case of how is their maturity levels? How is their um, faith? How is their relationship with God going? Mm -hmm. What is their reason? What is their intention for wanting to date someone? Mm -hmm. You know, we have always been advocates of dating for the purpose of marriage. And so mm -hmm. you date someone who you can potentially see yourself marrying someday because mm -hmm. other than that, you're just dating to date. And that's just not yeah. something that we yeah. advocate. And yeah, so I would say maturity level, spiritual level, and what is your intentions? Like, why do you want to date someone? Mm -hmm. And also I would recommend if you don't know when to start dating, have a mentor, have someone in your life that you can talk to mm -hmm. that can give you advice and that kind of stuff and help you figure out when you should probably like be okay to start dating. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that is all of the questions that we're going to answer today. There was a ton of questions. So if you guys really enjoyed it, we can also do a part two because I got a lot of questions from you guys. So I wasn't able to answer all of them today, but I would love to do a part two if that's what you guys want. Again, if you guys want us to do a love story video, we can, we can spill all the beans and tell y'all our love story. Get your tea ready because we're about Get to spill it. Get your tea ready because we're going to tip it over. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, please give it a like. And if you guys have any questions, don't forget to comment down below. I hope this video was able to help you in some way, um, give you some kind of advice or clarity or just to entertain you guys and let you guys know about our life. But yeah, I love you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoy having sex. Um, to help me answer some questions today. But yeah, we love you so much and we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Peace. <laughs>